what is going on there YouTube and welcome back to another comic book video this is the channel where we sit down and cover different comic book stories from Marvel DC and even IDW as well today we're going to sit down and cover the first appearance in the origin of the tarantula this was a villain Marvel tried to give to Spider-Man that was animal theme hoping fans would love him but if you do like today's comic book video, please leave me a like down below and also subscribe to the channel for more content to come in the near future. Also, any suggestions on books I should read, please let me know in the comments below. You never know, your suggestion could be a future video down the road. I do hope you enjoy today's video. Now we are picking up with Peter Parker trying to get on this cruise ship on time as Spider-Man because he is going to be on this cruise ship with Liz Allen, Mary Jane, and Flash Thompson. And they're just friends trying to have a good time for once in their lives. And you have Peter tell us that this takes place after Doc Ock tried to marry Aunt May, but also brings up the fact that he is wanted for murder since the world thinks that he killed Norman Osborn born back in the death of the Gwen Stacy storyline but this is him just trying to have a good day with his friends on this cruise but of course with Peter having a superhero life that trouble always follows him wherever he goes the reason why I say that is because the boat gets hijacked by someone this is the moment we first get introduced to the tarantula but let me say this now, this is actually the first Tarantula character in Marvel Comics and the one Marvel brings around a few times hoping fans would fall in love with the character. But you have Peter Parker go and change into his Spider-Man outfit to take care of this problem. Except when Spider-Man gets back up on the deck level of the boat, Spider-Man sees that Tarantula is fighting against some of the staff members of the boat thinking they can take on the tarantula on their own but the problem is that one of the staff members falls into the city river and so spider-man actually leaves the boat to save the man who fell off into the river but after he does that when spider-man decides that he should give back to the boat to save the rest of the people that is when he finds out that he is out of web fluid and so he has to run home to get some more now I would usually skip the part with Spider-Man going home to just get some more web fluid except this is actually important because for a while Harry Osborn has been thinking that Spider-Man is Peter Parker. Again, the world thinks that Spider-Man killed Norman Osborn and so when he sees Spider-Man go into the room of Peter Parker to get more web fluid and leaves, Harry Osborn sees everything and of course confirms what Harry has been thinking. But back on the boat with Tarantula and his henchmen who are trying to take everyone's personal belongings, you have Flash Thompson think that he can take on Tarantula on his own, but of course he can't. Thankfully, by the end of that fight, Spider-Man arrives. Now, since Tarantula is technically a regular guy who is just a great fighter going against Spider-Man who is a superhero, the fight really goes the way you think it would, with Spider-Man being able to beat down on Tarantula and Tarantula's henchmen. Except, Tarantula has these piercers on his foot, and when they hit someone, they can temporarily paralyze someone. Spider-Man gets hit by one, but with his powers, it was not enough to stop him. Except right after trying to continue to fight against Tarantula, Tarantula was able to get a few more hits in with his piercers that completely paralyzes Spider-Man. Now after being paralyzed, Spider-Man sees some boots that looks very familiar to him where we see that the Punisher is here now to kill Spider-Man. The Punisher is here because he believes that Spider-Man is the one trying to hijack the cruise ship. To the Punisher, all bad guys must die. And so this is his chance to get rid of Spider-Man and save the day. Also, Punisher thinks that Tarantula is actually a good guy. 
Now with Punisher doing all of that talking, it gives Spider-Man the chance to get over being paralyzed to fight against the Punisher. But after they do exchange a few blows, that is when the Punisher realizes that Spider-Man is actually innocent and Tarantula is the bad guy. But of course, Tarantula gets away and you have Punisher tell Spider-Man to meet him somewhere else later on. There is a moment in the story where Peter pretends that he was thrown off the boat as well. That is why no one could see Spider-Man and Peter Parker at the same time. But Flash Thompson is starting to think that something is up with Peter Parker. Now there is another page I want to focus on when Peter Parker is in the shower. That Harry Osborn actually finds the costume of Spider-Man in the room of Peter Parker. Just confirming that Spider-Man is Peter Parker. And that is it for now, but the next story we'll see him become the Green Goblin. But after all of those things happen, you have the Punisher and Spider-Man meet up. But this is where you have the Punisher go over the origin of the first Tarantula, where we learn his name is Eton Rodriguez, and he is from South America, and he was a revolutionary trying to overthrow a fascist government. Except there was one time he killed a security guard cold blooded and his group kicked him out. But then he joined the other side where the fascist government gave him his tarantula outfit and made him their superhero of their country. Then he killed someone on their side cold blooded and was chased out of the country and he came to New York. Now of course after that you have the Punisher and Spider-Man agree to work together to go after Tarantula where of course they do find him. This begins a battle between the two sides where Punisher takes on the henchmen of Tarantula while Spider-Man deals with Tarantula himself. Where we get a few pages of them fighting but of course ends with Spider-Man being able to defeat Tarantula and Punisher shows us that he had captured the henchmen. And that wraps up the first time we see and learn about the origin of Tarantula. But we do get another page where we see that Harry Osborn going into his father's old base. And this is where we get the birth of the new Green Goblin. Now, usually at this point in the video, this is where I sit down and do a small review on the story, where I share my thoughts of how I feel about this story. To be honest, I don't want to, but I'm going to. Now, tell you the truth, when it comes to this book right here, and I look at the tarantula, I can tell that Marvel was just praying for a miracle back in the 1970s that this character right here would take off. They're kind of like, hey, here is the tarantula. He looks cool. He's different. You guys will love him. And tell you the truth, fans did not like tarantula that much. He had some love here and there that Marvel did bring him back for a couple more stories. But to me personally, this character is a C-list villain. Not a B-list, a C-list. He is a C-list villain that Marvel was hoping he could be at least a B-list character. But of course, that did not happen. Now, there is one good thing about this story. It did perfectly set up as a prelude to Harry Osborn becoming the new Green Goblin, which we are going to cover in the near future. Besides that, I guess this was a cool story, but eh. Anyways, I am going to go ahead and end today's video right here. So please hit that like button down below and also subscribe to the channel for more content to come in the near future. Also, any suggestions on books I should read? Well, please let me know in the comments below because you never know your suggestion could be a future video down the road. But I'm out of here, y'all. I'll see y'all next time.